Hello and welcome to the gallery. My name is Yon and today we are painting up some hero faces. Now the first base we're going to start out with is uh, more of a fantasy themed base. We're going to do a cavalry base or a mounted hero type base with some rocky outcroppings and generally just fun and easy paint job, fun and easy build. It's going to be fun and easy. So for our first trick today we're going to start out with something simple. We're going to do a hero base for some sort of cavalry or something to that effect. For uh, fantasy age or sigma type things. We start out by just gluing a little bit of bark here and there on an oval base. Then put down some rock underneath that to give it some sort of flavor to the earth underneath. Plop down a couple of skulls. Or a fair few of them. I mean, this is Warhammer. There's a lot of skulls. And then pop a sandal highlight on that. Uh, this is quick and simple, so contrast on the base. An aggro stone uh, brownie type contrast just to get some flavor going. Let that go a little bit into the rocks to start on the color there. Then dark gray contrast over that. Mix it into the brownie things. And uh, after the dark gray some white and then we're gonna drag the dark and the brown and the white all together to give it some sort of natural look and that's pretty damn simple now we're not done we're gonna add a little bit of highlights to it but in a quick fashion we're gonna dry brush some gray on top of all the rocks and after we've gone over it with gray we go over it with a very very light dry brush of almost white if not pure white and that will give us a nice rocky look and now the rocks are basically done so we have some skulls underneath throw some bone wire on that let them sit for a bit and then we're gonna use some shades and get a little bit of more definition both to the rocks and to the ground. This is an Aquax earth shade but you can use any bronze shade or mix your own or oil washes, whatever you want. Yeah, put that on the rock, put that on the ground and most of this is now done. Just a little bit of skeletal hoard on the skulls and we are done with the fantasy base. That was quite quick. And there we have it. A quick and easy hero base for your cavalry or interesting characters for your fantasy or Age of Sigmar games. Now that we've dipped our toes into this base building thing, I would like to recommend all those fancy little buttons down on the bottom of the screen. Pressing them is quite a nice thing to do. Next up, we're going to go more futuristic, more 40 k and we're painting up and building a base uh, made for a hero. Preferably some sort of evildoer, something to that effect. Now let's try doing something a little bit more complex. We're going for some ruined vehicle look here. So I grab a handful of crap I found around the house, something from uh, inside of a pen, some old plastic, a little bit of uh, uh, pieces from an old rhino that I chaosified, uh, the torch from Abaddon's base because I made him a separate base, and we're going for a vehicle lying in ruins. Perhaps it's new, most likely it's not, because new is not fun when you're painting, in my opinion. So, as you can see, make the pen thing into some sort of uh, turret. Maybe it's a gun with fire inside it. Who knows? Who cares, really? It's going to look fine. That's the main thing. And the old door, break that up, or dent it more. Put that on there, and then the windows from the tank. Cut that up, break it up a little bit, make it a little bit more interesting, a little bit more flavor. And that's the name of the game. We want flavor to the hero base, but not too much. It's not going to overpower the model after we finished with it, because why would you do that? The model is the focal point. This should be quick, and but should be fun. 
and then a little bit of textured uh, paste that I put down there. It's got sand texture to it, not unlike many products from other companies, but this is bought in bulk at some uh, small store here. And you can get a lot of this for less than what you would pay for the Games Workshop texture stuff. Therefore, I buy this and it'll probably last me for years and years and years. I also put this a little bit on the actual metallic bits because it'll look more ruined that way. Then some cobblestones, some little cinder thin plates that I had. I'm putting that on top of the texture and this will be the basis of our model. And then of course skulls and chopped up arms and heads because this is not a nice place to be. Now we're putting some blue contrast paint on all the plates or the panels that are on the base. And this will be the basis for what we will be using later. I will also be putting some black or dark gray contrast paint on the ground and on the cobblestones and on the rocks. And I find that using contrast paints as a base before you start doing some more refined work on uh, bases and on bigger models, it's, uh, it's okay. I mean, this is a quick way to get things going, to see where the highlights might pop, especially over a cenophil one. Uh, yellow and then orange and then black, all wet blended together, and that'll make the basis of our fire. Like I said, using contrast as a starting point is fine. Just don't overdo it as a finishing move, because contrast doesn't get you the highlights you really want, but it can get you the ideas of the highlights you really want. Now we're dry brushing a little bit of dark blue and then a little bit of light blue on all the blue bits. And then the blue is basically done. We're gonna ruin it up a little bit more later on, but this is done for now. Dark gray on all the cobblestones and all the rocks and all the ground. And then a little bit of a light gray on top of that, just on the edges to catch a little bit of highlight. We're gonna have this done really quickly at this point. Now we have some metallics, a little bit of silver here and there on all the metallic bits, on the grates, on the things that were underneath, whatever those were, on the outside of the windows, and uh, most importantly, on the giant tube thing coming in the back, because it's probably metal, don't know what it is though, but it's metal that has fire in it, that sounds 40k. Then a little bit of gold here and there, not too much, just in a few paint laces, just to break up the metal that we already have. And then we start dry brushing a little bit of silver or, or old metal looks onto the rough places of the armor panels, and this will give it a rusty look in a few steps. Next it's typhus corrosion. I love this paint. Put down a big glob of it, rinse out in the water, and then with a wet brush, move it a little bit around, and you get this really, really disgusting old metal, full of grime and grit and ugliness. It's so beautiful. And then a big pile of the same thing on the turrety thingy, and same method, wet it out a little bit. Now that the, the, that is drying, we start putting some Agrax Earthshade here and there, especially where we want a little bit of definition or a little more dirt. So in the green, in the grids, on the hand, on the ground, everywhere mostly, on the rocks. If it goes a little bit too much on the rocks, you can just wipe it off immediately. While that's drying, let's finish the flame. Some yellow dry brushing on the bottom of it, follow that up with a little bit of orange dry brushing, a little bit higher, and then we're gonna get the smog really going with a little bit of black wash on the topmost and then dragging that out with a moistened brush into the most thing. Now we're going for rust. Riser rust from Game Shorts is a good thing. And I dry brush that over all the gritty bits and then follow that up with a soft dry brush of more metallic colors. A little bit of glaze around where the fire is and where the fire might fall. And that'll make give you a cheap, quick OSL effect. 
it's that good oil itself, but it has a little bit of flavor to it. Then, of course, skulls need to be painted bone white on those, and we will follow that up a little bit later on. The face is uh, completely without blood, so golem and flesh over the white looks quite pale. Skeletal horde on the bones. I love that contrast color. It really, really works. And after that is uh, dried, we will put some highlights on it. Blonde hair on the severed head. And you don't have to be neat. This head will be covered in a lot of blood later on. Like I said, highlight up the skulls. And now it's just the piece de resistance. A little bit of blood here and there. Okay, a lot of blood here and there. This head was not taken off in a nice way. Figuratively speaking. And of course, blood around the hand. Because the hand did not go off nicely either. And there we have the next base. I mean, this looks perfect for 40k. It's got ruins on it. It's got skulls on it. It's got blood on it. Of course, you could use this for a different kind of setting, but this is really 40k because of all the, well, skulls and ruins and everything. Thank you very much for joining me here today. There are links in the description for all kinds of stuff, social media and various tidbits. You do with it what you will. Like, share and subscribe and yell it from the mountains. But until next time, farewell.